some of the best pilots in the world that are flying these planes, like I can fall in their footsteps and do the same thing. Until I realized I was going to be so big of a heavyweight that I'd have some waiver problems, but I still can cut down uh, after these four years and then probably get a pilot slot, so we'll see. What do you have to cut down to get the pilot slot? I gotta be 225 pounds without gear, I think. And I was like 270 pounds with gear when I was trying to get it, so. I mean, as soon as my wrestling career is over, I'll be able to cut some weight. But until then, I gotta keep lifting. I gotta get big. Kirk Levey is not—he's not gonna start cutting weight either. So I gotta be big, compete. You obviously are familiar with wrestling in Tulsa at the Big 12s. Have you imagined what that's gonna be like whenever you run out there in an orange singlet? So. I had a coach that once said, whenever you're out there wrestling, if you hear anyone yelling or screaming, they're always cheering for you. And, you know, coming from Air Force, wrestling, Oklahoma State definitely had more fans. But whenever I heard someone yelling and cheering, I'm like, they're cheering for me. You know, it doesn't matter what they're saying. But now it's like, okay. <laughs> now they are actually all cheering for me. You know, this is only an hour. You know, Tulsa's an hour away from Stillwater. And, I mean, I just remember being in that arena, and it's all orange anyway. Like, I guarantee you 80, 90% of the fans in that arena are Oklahoma State. So, I mean, I'm kind of, I'm kind of used to it, but now I'll be like, you know, it feels good. And I'll be wearing the orange singlet out there in the map. What, I imagine for every team that's coming into that, it, it feels like a home tournament for, for Oklahoma State. Just <laughs> yeah. like, do you guys not, not resent them, but are you like, oh man, of course they're cheering for these guys. Are you, or is there any of that whenever you're, you're coming in uh, to Tulsa from a, another team? Yeah, I, mean, I definitely think it's like, not a home field advantage, but I mean, kind of like a home field advantage sometimes because, like I said, like that whole arena is mainly Oklahoma State. But with that, it's also hilarious because they cheer for everyone who's wrestling like against OU. So really, they're, I mean, there's a bunch of wrestling fans. I mean, they're like watching everybody, but it's it's super fun when you're in there and you just hear the whole like. There's no you know, no one's wrestling, but you just you, know, you see OU guy get taken down, and the arena's going crazy because they're just like, you know, that just that rivalry. It, it's fun. Air Force is on the schedule this year. Yeah. What's, is that kind of unique seeing that? It is a little different for me. Um, obviously, there's no bad blood there. I love my team. I still keep in contact with all my guys. Um, you know, that duel, I might yeah. wrestle in it, I might not. You know, one match talk to Dean? Know, isn't going to determine the rest of my season whether I you know, wrestle that match or not. But I mean, I love those guys. It's awesome. They're wrestling against them. There's nothing wrong with some friendly competition, but we'll see. You think that'll be weird for you, like that day? I think it'll be a little, little different. Um, obviously, I know it's, it's a lot different story when you leave a place because you know you just don't like it. You know, it's on bad terms, but you know, Air Force doesn't have a graduate program, so there's no possible way I could stay there and wrestle another year. But like I said, I still keep in contact with all my coaches. You know, I still love those guys. Still hang out with them whenever I go up to Colorado. But it'll be a little bit, a little bit weird that day. Yeah. We're inside a month. It's the first. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about the team? <laughs> oh, so, I mean. Wrestling each other in this room is crazy because Coach Taylor teaches both sides of everything every time we do something. And I think we just don't realize how actually, like, how much we've sharpened our sword, how sharp our edge is. Because wrestling each other is like, we're like, when there's a scramble, no one's conceding any point. So these scrambles are long. When we go out there and wrestle people, they're not going to have that ability that we do. So I think it's going to be a shock to us. I mean, we're just going there and grinding every day. We're loving the experience. You know, it's not like oh we got to go in and do this. It's like oh we get to we get to go wrestling, get better in this position today. It's a lot more fun. Like we're showing up 30 minutes early to practice, just ready to learn something. We're not dragging in at the last second. You know, so the energy's there, especially as I'm watching. You know, because I don't cut weight, but I watch the guys cut weight. I mean, they're doing it the right way. They're still feeling great. They're still wrestling super strong. So I think it's gonna, other teams are going to be really shocked because they're going to be like. These guys just don't give up. But if you've ever wrestled Coach Taylor, you know that he will never concede a single point. And you know, I feel like I'm kind of the same way now. So wrestling the guys in the room, it's kind of hard to realize how good we've actually gotten over the past. You know, we've been wrestling here for four months, so three, four months. So I think it's gonna be it's gonna be a shock. It's gonna be awesome. You were were you the finals at Big Twelves with Cerber a couple of years? Ago? I was. Yeah. <laughs> and he almost had you in a cradle. Yeah. I mean, he did. Have you guys discussed that moment at all yet? No, I think we've joked about it a couple times. I mean, Cerber's awesome. He's he's liked by everyone. It's hilarious. We're going to to school or we're going to get dinner and everyone's just saying hi to Luke. I mean, these, it's just it's it's so nice finally able to be teammates with these guys because you know in wrestling and, and you're competing against people it's different because that's the only perception you have of them is the competition version of them you know when i step on the mat i'm gonna, I'm gonna kill you i'm gonna rip your head off and so but off the mat you know <laughs> I'm, just, you know, I'm just a big teddy bear but uh finally being able to meet these guys and stuff like that i think we joked about it once but i mean i i mean i remember that match a little bit but it, we don't care. it's hilarious we always joke about like in the wrestling we'll wrestle each other and you know it's 
it's all fun. There's no, there's nothing there. It seems like you guys are gonna have a pretty old team. With that being said, Cody Merrill was here today. Yeah. Now, kind of what have you noticed about him so far? Yeah, I think the young generation, which is weird to say. I mean, I'm, I'm technically still younger, but you know, I'm a fifth year, and he's just coming in. But I mean, kind of trying to give them the a solid foundation. I know the stuff that made a big difference for me. Uh, when I was a freshman, is uh, what were the upperclassmen doing? What were their habits? Because that really directly translates to what's going to happen with the little guys. And you know, we got the the older guys here are setting probably the best examples I could ever think of at any school. So, expect, you know, at Air Force, I try to set that good example. There's some things I did good. There's some things I did bad. This is kind of another year to refine that again. So I think it's really important that us older guys are setting good examples and doing the right stuff so they can see that. Because if that's all they know, that's what they're going to do for the rest of their career. If they see, you know, other classmen slacking off or giving up points in practice, it's going to set a different different tone. But, I mean, Cody's, um, I wrestle with Cody as well. Um, but he, he's, a little, he's cutting a little bit of weight, but they're, they're so open to learning from us. And, I mean, because I'll wrestle them and I'll give them feedback and they're very coachable, which is probably the most important thing because you know, if you have a, a great coach who knows all this stuff, you're not going to listen to them, it doesn't matter. But they're really digging into the program and having someone like Coach Taylor who's so reputable in wrestling, it's easy to follow what he's telling you to do. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you've been